and a bunch of State Department exiles who were expecting promotions took their special set of skills in coercing European countries to pass sanctions on themselves to cut off their own leg to spite themselves or to pass sanctions on Russia. They ran back that same playbook doing a roadshow for censorship instead for sanctions. We are now witnessing, you know, transatlantic flank attack 2.0, if you will, which is because they have lost a lot of their federal government powers to do this same censorship operation they had been doing from 2018 to 2022, in part because the House has, has totally turned on them, in part because of the media, in part because Missouri v. Biden, which won a, uh, a slam dunk case actually banning government censorship at the trial court and appellate court levels, is now between the, uh, before the Supreme Court. They've now moved into two strategies. One of them is, is state-level censorship laws. California just passed a new law, which the censorship industry totally drove from start to finish around require, they call it transform, plat, you know, platform accountability and transparency, which is basically forcing, you know, Elon Musk to give over the kind of narrative mapping data that these CIA conduits and Pentagon cutouts were using to create these weapons of mass deletion, these abilities to just censor everything at scale because they had all the internal platform data. Elon Musk took that away. They're using state laws like this new California law to crack that open. But the, the major threat right now is the threat from Europe with you know, something called the, uh, the EU Digital Services Act, which was cooked up in tandem with folks like like NewsGuard, which is run by, you know, which has, has a board of Michael Hayden, head of the CIA, NSA, four-star general. Rick Stengel is on that board from, from the State Department's propaganda office. Tom Ridge is on that board from the, from the Department of Homeland Security. Oh, and Anders Fogh Rasmussen is on that board, who is the, uh, the general secretary of NATO under the Obama administration. So you have NATO, the CIA, the NSA, four-star general, DHS, and the State Department working with the EU to craft the censorship laws that now are the largest existential threat to X, other than potentially X uh, advertiser boycotts, because there is now disinformation is now banned as a matter of law in, in, in the EU. And the EU is a bigger market for X than the US. There's only 300 million some people in the US. There's 450 million in Europe. X is now forced to comply with this brand new law that just got ratified this year, where they either need to forfeit 6% of their global annual revenue to the EU to maintain operations there, or put in place essentially the kind of, you know, CIA bumper cars, if you will, that I, I've been describing over the course of this in order to have an internal mechanism to censor anything that the EU, which is just a proxy for NATO, uh, deems to be disinformation. And you can bet with 65 elections around the, around the globe this year, you can, you can predict every single time what they're going to define disinformation as. So that's the main, the main fight right now is, is dealing with the transatlantic flank attack from Europe. I've said this five times, but that's just one of the most remarkable stories I've ever heard, and I'm grateful to you for bringing it to us. Mike Benz, Executive Director of the Foundation for Freedom Online, and I hope we see you again. Thanks, Tucker. Free speech is bigger than any one person or any one organization. Societies are defined by what they will not permit.